welcome to my Chaiti Culture Club. My name is Anna, and today we have an interesting interview with Mariella. Mariella, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, my name is Mariella Erkens. I'm a tea expert and a tea writer and a tea educator. I teach about tea, and my speciality is tea and food pairing. I even wrote a book about it. And today I'm going to explain a little bit about tea and food pairing, but Robert already told you a lot about that. And um, I'm going to explain my uh, special system that I developed, especially for restaurants and cafes. But I'll explain more about that later. Yes, so the idea was uh, to tell more about the food pairing because uh, we see that there are more and more people interested in how to pair, for example, tea and cheese or tea or an other kind of food. So today we're going to tell more about that because Marielle, she is specialized in this. And meanwhile, we're going to also drink some tea. And uh, so the first question, how you came into the world of uh, food pairing, like in tea, and what's, what's your story? Okay, um, well, I used to be a chef. I used to have my own restaurant in Brazil. Then I came back to Amsterdam and I did private cooking here. And I was in a wholesale store to buy produce and stuff for an event that I was um, cooking for. And they invited me to a tea tasting, mm -hmm. but with food pairing. This was in 2010, mind you. We've been working on this for quite some time now yes. and mm -hmm. I was new to this. Till that time I drank tea like everybody else does. Tea a tea bag, bag in yeah, a mug yeah. <laughs> and drink it without you know taking any notice. Mm -hmm. um, so I was served this beautiful tea with very beautiful delicate handmade finger food, mm -hmm. the whole group was, and we were stunned the way the food was enhanced by tea. the tea and the, the complexity and the beautiful flavors of the tea, I was blown away. I said, this is something everybody should know about. And it was 2010, right? This was 2010, okay, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's quite new. Yes, and, and then... Time, I mean. Yeah, it was, it was quite new and I was just, you know, blown away. And I bought all the tea and I started experimenting, but I didn't know anything about tea, of course. So I took a course, I bought a lot of books and I took a course in, uh, in tea, tea and food pairing, tea training. And I was going to do that one year, but then I was so smitten with it. I took another year and another year, three year course mm -hmm. at the International Tea Academy here in, in the Netherlands. And the more I got to know about tea, the more I realized how huge the world of tea is. Even if you turn 150, you will never be able to learn everything there is that you can know about tea. Mm -hmm. So I keep on learning every day. And bit by bit, the tea took over my cooking. Mm -hmm. I still cook, of course. I love to cook, but not professionally anymore. And now my world evolves around tea. Mm -hmm. So now you are a professional tea sommelier. So you, mm -hmm. are, what is what does it mean? Like when you say that I'm a tea sommelier, um, I know about how to pair tea and food, just like you do with wine. And actually, there are so many similarities between tea and wine. You have no idea. Actually, the only things that are opposite are the alcohol and the acidity. Mm -hmm. Because wine is quite acidic and tea is much more subtle. Um, if you do like your alcohol, well, then I understand you probably want to stick to wine. But if you do not like alcohol or you want to drink less alcohol, then tea is actually the only true option, alternative for an alcoholic drink. Yeah, because also I noticed that um, there are many people who um, now became more aware of uh, what they're drinking, you know, and also less people, um, I mean, more and more people want to have uh, more healthy options. So, for example, tea, I think it's a healthy option, why it's still nice. I do uh, uh, appreciate also these uh, kind of drinks. 
but I see tea more and more they becoming interesting uh, alternative for people who would like to explore more. Yeah, exactly. And also, what what do you see like uh, what can be the difference between the um, uh, tea and um, or between a food uh, with tea and food with wine, for example? Um, well, similarities are they both enhance the food. Mm -hmm. They can connect the flavors. They can bring out certain elements of your dish um, and they lengthen the flavor. Tea, on top of that, also, also has a cleansing effect. So after a few bites, when you take a few sips of tea, your palate is clean again and you're ready for the next bit. Whereas with wine, that's not always the case. And another thing is that wine is quite dominant. Whereas tea is more, um, how, how would I say that, is more a servant to the food. Mm -hmm. So it can, get, can, can be more easier paired with different types of food or like or it's easier to, for example, compared to with wine, it's easier to um, assign to different types of food or... Mm -hmm. It's... Um, you have less clashes. Mm -hmm. With wine, you can, have, you can have this huge clash with the food. Whereas with tea, the worst that can happen is that it stays flat or the tea disappears. But then you take a few more sips and the tea is back again. So it's much more subdued. And mm -hmm. um, how um, maybe you can kind of open a few secrets to. <laughs> Mm. How actually you pair, for example, now you we are drinking uh, Lishan Gaba Oolong, so it's a Taiwanese Gaba Oolong which uh, has this roasted, roasted, roastedness and yeah, flavor. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. you can see. So, uh, what would be then the secret of um, pairing, or at least uh, some guidelines for someone who would like, for example, tonight or tomorrow to try different tea with different food, like how you would. Approach, kind of that. approach that, right. Um, well, I've developed a special system for people who, who have just started. That's also in the book. Mm -hmm. um, the book is also in English, by the way, in a digital version. Thank you. This oh. tea. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that Mariella, she wrote a book about the food pairing. And uh, maybe later you can also tell about like this book, right? Because yeah. it's quite interesting. It's like when I saw it, I was so amazed to know that there are people who are really into like discovering those uh, subtleness but also power of pairing tea with food which is i think a really upcoming trend now so yeah so, but first maybe like let's the tea. Uh, the tea yeah okay so it depends do you want to s search for a tea because you have a s specific dish in mind or do you start with the tea and you don't know yet what to cook those are different approaches but say let's say we are tasting this tea and we're going to find a nice match. combination, yeah. A nice mm -hmm. combination. Okay, so I smell the tea first, always. Mm -hmm. Robert told you already. Mm -hmm. And it's a very rich, roasted, um, warm mm -hmm. tea. And uh, the texture is smooth. It's not astringent at all. It's very smooth. And it's rich, it's not bright, it's not fresh, it's rich, it's deep, it's warm. It's a kind of multi-layered, right? So it's, it, yeah. it's like, yeah, multi-layered, but also multifaceted indeed, yeah. Yeah. And then I go to the flavors. Is it sweet, sour, bitter, umami, or salt? Well, tea is almost never salt, but mm -hmm. sometimes you get a bit of salty mm -hmm. side effect. This would, for me, is sweet. Do you agree? Yeah, kind of sweet, slight, slight taste of bitterness. Very slight, kind of on a, on a aftertaste, I would say. But I, I, I mean, very distant. Very, very distant. Yeah, it's very mellow. Mm -hmm. Then it's fruity. It's definitely fruity, but you know those warm, uh, warm fruits like mm -hmm. stewed plums or um, like cooked. Cooked compote, right? Yes, like yeah. fruit mm -hmm. compote. Mm -hmm. It's it's not bright food. It's not green apple, not at all, not even close. Mm -hmm. Stewed apple, stewed red apple. Mm -hmm. That is in there as well. And it has a slight earthiness, definitely nutty mm -hmm. from the roasting. It absolutely has a nuttiness to it. Mm -hmm. 
bit like hazelnut, freshly roasted hazelnut. Yeah. And then later on, the finish is bright. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's it's, it's not dull. It's uh, it's it's, it's bright. Right. It's yeah. um, vivid. Absolutely, yeah. It's very vivid. It like it's, it, it jumps on my tongue. Mm -hmm. So there is a brightness to the richness as well. The so edge is bright. Yeah. Okay. So now it's we have the complex profile. Tea, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It's a complex <laughs> yeah. tea. Uh, very pleasant. A warming. Warming, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, if you you can do two things, you can either say I want a contrasting dish. Or I want a Com compatible mm. dish. Mm -hmm. If you would go for a compatible compatible dish, you could think of autumn, like pumpkin, uh, yams, roasted potatoes, beetroots, um, celery root, and stews. If you if you eat meat, a stew of meat, uh, pork would go nicely with this as well. So those kind of dishes. Some like warming something in the oven, grilled. Oven dishes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oven, grilled. If you would rather have a contrasting dish, that's risky. Because you might get something that you do not expect at all. But it's the most adventurous. Mm -hmm. It's what I like to do best. <laughs> you always say with a complimentary one. But oh, to go for that special effect, that's exciting. Um, in this case, I could think of um, maybe a salad, fish. Mm -hmm. This one, with fish you have to be careful because if you have a very astringent tea, it dries out the, the fish. You get the texture of dry fish, you don't want that. But since this one is so smooth, it could actually be very nice. Say for example, if you have a cod, uh, very shortly grilled, still a bit translucent in the middle, and you have a citrus dressing with that, and maybe some capers, uh, maybe a slice of raw kyocha beet. Mm -hmm. I just got an idea, maybe we can publish also a few recipes, you know, like with uh, kind of this tea paired with this recipe, yeah. right? Yeah, that's, sure, that's that would be great. Yeah, yeah. And then we can write the tasting notes, Yeah, because that's what you always have to do. I still do this mm -hmm. after uh, 12 years of, you know, drinking tea every day, combining it every day with my food, I still take notes because you can't remember it. It's just impossible. Even if you think, no, but this, this is clear. You know it more or less because I have this huge library in my head right now, but I always write it down. So I, I write a summary of the tasting profile like I just did. Yeah. End of the dish. And then I write down what's the effect. Of the, of the two together of the and then I yeah. take a few bites of just separate ingredients mm -hmm. to see what they do with the tea mm -hmm. and then I take it all together like you're supposed to eat your dish you know little bits of everything together and then I try that with the tea and like Robert did I first take the tea then the food then the two together then the tea again then the bite again and then you have four or five different effects that's true, it's kind you of had like, that. yeah, it's really complex. And um, what I noticed that one of the main problems that people who are just starting, they have, is to determine the taste and the flavor. So what you said exactly, like to start to name it, to make a note, because uh, there is no right or wrong, right? It's exactly. Because it's like everyone has some unique taste, so the most important is to name it kind of, you know, to pin it, so what do I feel, what do I smell, and then the combinations or the mm, kind of naming can be different, but still you start to develop your library, right? Exactly, and that's why I developed these five different um, characteristics to define, I did this actually based on the, um, the, the t tasting analyzing system of Peter Klosser. He's a famous Dutch gastronomy professor and he did this for wine. I had to adapt it, of course, because it's tea, it's not wine. But I took his system as a base and then I developed it into a system for tea. So you have five components. You have taste, mm -hmm. that's sweet, sour, salt, bitter or umami, main taste. 
Then you have aromas. There's a wheel of aromas, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also wrote uh, in the book, there's an aroma wheel with all five components in it. So you can use the wheel actually to help you to find the right define, taste, right? Yes. Oh, nice. Because sometimes you think, but I taste spinach. So then you go to the outer ring where the subaromas are and then you look for oh, spinach. Oh, that corresponds with vegetal, vegetal aromas. Maybe after, like, also it's nice to show in the book yeah. and how, it's, how it works. But sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. you taste sweet first, or bitter first, or whatever first. So then you start with that component, and then, hmm, what else do I? Oh, it reminds me of hmm, spinach, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you go to that, and then you look at the texture in your mouth, like what I did. Oh, it's very smooth. It's filming. It's not astringent at all. Or, oh, this is quite astringent. Or, hmm, this is dry. Hmm, no, this is full. So, you know the, the texture. What mm -hmm. do I register in my mouth? Mm -hmm. So you have uh, flavor, five, uh, five tastes, sorry. You have aroma and yeah. you have flavors, right? So this is like, oh, yeah. you said like five components that yeah, you... Yeah, you, you also have the um, intensity. Because that's another important thing. A tea can be very subtle, like white tea, and it can be very overpowering, like an Assam, for example. It doesn't say anything about the quality, because white tea can have very high quality, yet a very small intensity. And you have to keep that in mind, because if you have a very strong, overpowering dish, like with lots of spices, and you pair that with white tea, your tea will disappear. It still will have a lot of effect on the food though. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you want, that's what you're after, you can still use it. But be aware that your tea will lose. Yeah. And um, so you, you've said that you developed a way because the, now food pairing is becoming a new trend also in Michelin restaurants. So people are interested how to pair food uh, with different types of tea, but there's a problem. Because the way how we brew here and Gung Fu style, so we use the Gai Wan and the Guando Bay, small cups, so it's probably kind of very difficult for the restaurants, right? Because you don't yeah. have so much time and also the knowledge sometimes like for what kind of tea you need to have different temperature, but also quality of water. And so there are many like um, details, right? So not everyone has the time for it. So, and you found a solution, right? Because I did. Uh, yes, so there is kind of to help uh, both sides, like the consumers, restaurants to still to have good tea. Their yes, menu. exactly. I'll explain that. The, 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 that's the main problem in restaurants. Time. You simply don't have the time to dedicate yourself to tea like we do. We really sit down for it and enjoy it, yep. which is the best way, honestly. But in a restaurant, it's impossible. I know that because I, I used to have a restaurant, so I, have, I know very well what their problems are. Um, there is the Western style of brewing. You know, for example, with the handy brew, which is a system that you put the tea in, you add uh, water of the right temperature, and when the timer goes off, you place it on a jar or a cup or a glass, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Very easy, but still, you will need soft water, temperature, right temperature, temperature, right amount of tea, yeah. right amount of brewing time, and it's simply too complicated. If you have like five foot ten times. Exactly, tea, yeah. and you have to serve the food, and you have, you know, yeah. you're running around. So I thought I have to come up with something that still um, makes beautiful tea the way we are used to, and yet is very easy, foolproof, efficient, no problems, and you can make it in advance. So I crossed the Gong Fu Cha style and the, uh, the, the uh, Turkish and Russian style, you know, with a lot of tea and extract, with uh, lots chifir, of tea, a chifir, <laughs> chifir, chifir, it's called in Russian. Um, so a lot of tea, just a little bit of water, boiling water, and then you get this extract and then they boil it, right? Yeah. And then you add water. To dilute it. To dilute it yeah. to your own taste. Some might like it stronger, some might like it weaker, and there you are. Perfect system. But also for the restaurant business, still too complicated. Yeah. And you want the soft water because as soon as water um, 
is heated above 55 degrees, you get limestone. And limestone is what makes the tea dark and murky and causes the, 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 the stuff inside the, 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 the cups mm -hmm. and stuff. But worse, it also diminish the taste, it's also make it flat, you know, exactly. flatten the taste. So it, absorbs, example, it yeah. absorbs all the fine components, the flavor components, and they cannot release themselves anymore. And, and there yeah. goes your beautiful tea. And it, uh, for example, for the oolongs, it's, I think it's really important to have for the whites, for the greens, like to have good quality soft water, like what you said, because very often in the Netherlands, I taste the water from the tape is quite harsh, you know, like yes, so I would use um, or like some softer water or at least to filter it not to yeah, use filtered it directly water. from the tap. Yeah. yeah, I do that for all teas mm -hmm. uh, because our water here in the Netherlands is excellent quality, yeah. absolutely, and when you drink it cold you can drink it like that, it's no problem whatsoever, but as soon as you heat it you get that white greyish Cal it's cold, yeah. Yeah, calcium uh, deposit and you don't want that. Um, so a filter system, most restaurants say, but I have a filter system in my coffee machine, right? Mm, yeah, but, <laughs> but it's <laughs> but not good no. for tea. <laughs> it's not good for tea because coffee needs much harder water. Yeah. So you still have the same problem. Okay, so here I am. I want tea that is easy to brew, high quality, good flavor, and I have to use the water from the coffee machine. Mm -hmm. So what do, I, what do I do? I have several systems here just to show you that you don't need fancy pots. If you only use it in the back office, it's fine to use big jars. This, of course, is way too small for a restaurant, but this is my, uh, my own example, home pot. Yeah. But if you're front of house, you want it to look nice and flashy, right? So then you could use this jar Buttons. because it has already, you see, it has a strainer inside. Mm -hmm. And then you can pour it straight away. I'll show you. And you can also place this on your bar in beautiful jars and show the guest, look how beautiful this tea is. Yeah. The see? shape, the shape and the, uh, yes. Yeah, so it's beautiful. Yeah. So yes. then you already get a pre-sensation as a guest, like, oh, I'm getting something very special. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm willing to pay for that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take this for example. Uh, I have a wine glass here and people say, Oh, wine glasses. No, you can't pour boiling water in wine glasses. They will break. No. <laughs> I do it all the time, even in crystal glasses, and it works beautifully. Because, okay, so this is an extract. This is a lot of tea, mm -hmm. but just a bit of water. I use um, a ratio of 40 grams of tea to one liter of water. Usually you use maybe 10 or 12 grams if you do Western style. So it's about three four to four times, times more. more. Yeah. And how so do you dilute it? So like you don't want to drink it straight. That it will be way too strong. So what you just do is you do a bit in the glass and then you say to the guest, you, you explain to the guest, oh, this is, uh, th this was, which one was this? Uh, the so the, the same, same what we're drinking now. So okay. we're going to try now in... Uh, oh yeah, lovely. Yeah. We can compare it. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is a Lishan Gaba tea. Taiwan is so long. And then you just add boiling water. It is so easy. And then if the guest says, oh, but this is too strong for me, they can just add some more water. You can leave a beautiful jar or jug at the table. Or if they say, oh, oh, it's a bit too weak. Ta-da! You just add a bit of tea. It's that mm -hmm. easy. And you do this six hours at least ahead of time. Head, yeah. So after service, when one is polishing the cutlery and the other is drying the you dishes. Can just put the tea inside. You the barman or barwoman. Yeah. yeah. They, you, you have to use sterilized bottles, yeah. bottles so mm -hmm. you can do that in the, in the hot program of the, of, of the dishwasher for glasses. Um, you just add the tea, you add the water, you put a sticker on top, because you want to know, of course, when you, you made this see, yeah. and what's in there, and you put mm -hmm. it in the fridge. Ta-da! Easy, yeah. very <laughs> easy. Okay, if, I'll show you the other, other one yeah. too, you can taste this, mm -hmm. and let me know if you need more water or more. Maybe still too hot. Wow, it's really beautiful. Is it? Yeah, it's really aromatic. I mean, it's 
I, I recognize this Lishang Gaba's um, this intensity of the flavors flower but now also the flowery note came also above because here you feel more roastedness but also maybe um, here I put more um, Maybe is this for less my dry? Taste, I think for my taste, I would add more concentrate, more maceration. Yep. You are used to drinking strong more wine, yeah. but not everybody is in a restaurant. That's why mm -hmm. I always say, start with the average, mm -hmm. like one part of tea, three parts of water, yeah. and, and then adjust, adjust the taste. Yep. If you want more, let me know. I would put for myself more. <laughs> Because yeah, I, I, you do it yourself. Yeah, because I get used to indeed like a stronger concentration of tea. Yeah, and a lot of people that are they, not used to tea, they like light. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. it's but too much for them. Mm. I'll, I'll have a bit as well. How about that? So then I can compare with you. Yeah. Okay. But it's also beautiful actually to drink uh, tea from the wine glass. This I've never done before. <laughs> it's so nice because you so get the aromas, yeah. they stay inside. Well, I like to drink it strong as well, so I just don't add too much water. So, oh, it's very fruity. Right? And floral, yes, indeed. Because mm, no, here is more roasted and more... Yeah, uh, here the nutty notes are yeah. more dominant and here it's very fruity and maybe very floral. Yeah, maybe because of the cold brew, you know, because yeah. it has like this lighter um, lighter way of maceration. So that's why, it, you know, it's got this lighterness uh, in the taste and the flavor. It's because softer. It's softer, yeah. That's another good thing about this system. Mm -hmm. If this cools down, it doesn't go bitter. Whereas freshly brewed tea, if it's too much, yes. Yeah, if, it, if it cools down, it very often becomes bitter. This one, no. Even if you drink it completely cooled off, it still is lovely, round, soft in flavor. You don't get the bitters because you don't heat it up over 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. When you brew the tea, of course, now I added boiling water, but the tea, the, the, the components, the aromas have already Open up, yeah. um, diluted themselves. Mm -hmm. You like the system? Yes, and also like when I hold the uh, tea in the wine glass, I want immediately to pair it, so <laughs> to try something. Yeah, <laughs> I want to eat, I want to eat. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, to kind of, you know, it's like when you have this wine glass, so you want also to have something in your hand. Um, okay, so what would you think like would be a nice food pairing for this, uh, for this type of um, aromatic floral? I would say some maybe some apple strudel, you know, some some of this spice. Sweet, yeah, apple strudel would definitely go well with it. I was looking at savory dishes. Um, how about a, a fennel salad with orange and uh, caramelized mm -hmm. onions, maybe some olives, mm, some um, goat cheese, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this one goes really well with cheese. Well, most tea do. Well, you already yeah. explained <laughs> that, or Robert did. Interesting. But like this, it could even be combined with fish because it's smooth, it's not astringent, it's not drying. The aftertaste is a bit drying, but not so much so that it would dry out the fish. <laughs> yeah. Or prawns, maybe. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because there is a sweetness in prawns as well. Mm. But it's you know what I notice is that actually uh, these types of um, tea consumption, it's I think it's even more suitable for restaurants. You know because it has this um, vibe already inside. You know so you kind of it's it's, um, it's I would say it's even more much better than for example than the gunfu style. You know gunfu style it's more like I consider it's more as a, you know like a ritual like a more a uh, slow way of doing doing that also with more attention which in the restaurant you don't always have time for that you know so so probably this way is really nice kind of you know can be uh, combined with a good cuisine 
good exactly, tea, you yeah. know, and uh, to pair them together. And with Kung Fu Cha, you have the different layers one by one. The first tip is completely different than the third or the fourth or the fifth. And that will be difficult because you, you cannot say, I'm going to serve all my guests the fourth steep. How are you going yeah. to do that? True, yeah. And with this, you always have the same steep. You can adjust it with the strength. Indeed, because it's also, I think, uh, what also Mariela said, in the, uh, indeed, like when you have a um, Guven Fu style, for example, this alone you can brew up to 10, 12 times, and every time it's going to open up itself, you know, and then you have already something in your mind, you know, like combination of this fruitiness, for example, floral with this dish, but then the tea is going to open up itself. And, and then it you have like, yeah, it's, so you have completely different combinations. So, um, yes, I mean, I think this is more controlled, Easier, definitely easier. Also, like you don't need to have so much knowledge. Also, like so much uh, things to brew tea. You know, you just need to have some bottle proportion to know how to make it, uh, to store it. You know, and then just to serve it with the right types of food. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's perfect. I would like to thank you for watching our video and thank you, Mariella, for explaining us about the food pairing. You're very welcome. I had a great time, I hope you did too. And if you want to know more, you can buy my book. The Dutch version is in print, English version is digital. And we would like also to invite you to a practical workshop with Mariella, where we'll learn more about how to pair food and tea. And more information you can find below this video and also on our website and social media. So thank you for watching us.